Welcome to today's presentation, What I Need to Know About My Warfarin or Coumadin. Your doctor has ordered a medication called Warfarin, which is also known as Coumadin. And today we're going to talk about what it does, why you need to take it, why you have to have the blood tests that have been ordered, what side effects there are to taking the warfarin or coumadin, how while you're on your warfarin or coumadin you can stay healthy and safe, how coumadin or warfarin interacts with other medicine that you might be taking, how it affects your diet, and what kinds of information you need to share with your doctor. So to start with, let's talk about what your warfarin or coumadin does. Warfarin is a medicine that keeps your blood from making clots. So another way to look at that is, is that it thins your blood. Another way to look at it yet is it causes the blood to take longer to form a clot. And it can also prevent a clot from getting bigger. Warfarin is taken for many reasons. So it might be that you've suffered a stroke that blocked an artery or a vein, and so now your physician believes that you need to take the warfarin in order to prevent further strokes from occurring. Your heartbeat isn't regular. You have a, a, an arrhythmia, and so your doctor wants you to take your warfarin to keep your blood a little more thin so that you don't throw a clot or develop a clot because of your irregular heartbeat. You may just have had hip or knee surgery and so you're not as active as you typically are and so your doctor wants you for at least a short period of time to take warfarin which thins your blood and again prevents adverse events or uh, clots and other kinds of things from occurring. If you've had a heart valve replaced, you're certainly on warfarin, and again, that's to thin the blood and allow the blood to be able to pass through uh, that heart valve without having any problems. To prevent a blood clot from forming in your legs or your lungs, again, there may be uh, an issue where um, you have a history of having blood clots in your legs or lungs, and so it might be that you're taking the warfarin on a long-term basis to prevent those further uh, problems from occurring. And it also might be that you have a diagnosis of heart failure, which is a situation where your heart, which is a muscle, isn't pumping as well as it should. And so your physician has you on the warfarin, again, to prevent complications from occurring, such as clots. Why do you have to have the blood tests that are ordered? There's a blood test that's in particular uh, associated with warfarin, and that's known as an INR. And an INR is a shorter way of saying an international normalized ratio. And it's a very fancy way of measuring the clotting ability of your blood. And really when you're getting your INR done and the results come through, it's really monitoring and helping the physician determine whether you're taking too much warfarin, not enough warfarin, or just enough and there are different levels that your physician will uh, look at where he wants you to be um, when you're taking the warfarin or the coumadin and so this test this INR helps him determine if he needs to change your orders so again with the blood testing your doctor will decide how much warfarin you need by testing your blood and if the blood test or the INR is too high then you're going to be at higher risk for bleeding and the reverse is true if your INR is too low then you may be at risk for forming clots so it's really important to keep the appointments that are associated with those blood tests 
and make sure that you get to them and get the blood drawn so that your physician uh, can take a look at that and then determine whether or not you need to change, uh, have a change in dosage of your medication. Are there side effects to taking warfarin or Coumadin? Warfarin is a really strong medicine. And even if your blood tests are okay, you might notice a few things happening when you um, begin to take it. So your gums might bleed a little bit while you're brushing your teeth. And it's possible that you might get an, an occasional nosebleed. Again, some of that depends upon how dry the air is and other kinds of um, factors that you have going on. You might notice that when you bump up against something, you bruise a bit easier than you might uh, have if you aren't taking the, the warfarin. And you might also notice that it takes a little longer for a cut to stop bleeding. And those are all things to be um, aware of but not necessarily to be alarmed about. There are side effects, however, that we um, are very important and that we need to make sure that you call your doctor right away if you have any of those. So if you notice that your urine all of a sudden becomes red or a dark brown color, your bowel movements are red or look like tar. They're sort of black and sticky. If you happen to vomit and have vomit that's a coffee colored or red in color, any bleeding that doesn't stop relatively quickly with pressure, those are all things that your provider, your doctor, or your nurse practitioner need to know right away because those can be potentially life-threatening events. There are also some other side effects that we want to make sure that you notify your doctor or provider right away. And that would be if you cough up any spit that's red in color, if you develop a really bad pain like a headache or a stomach ache, if you start to experience any dizziness or weakness, and if you fall or hit your head. Again, very important that you notify someone really promptly so that you can get the attention that you need and remain safe while you're taking your warfarin. How you can stay healthy and safe. So just some things to be mindful of while you're taking your warfarin. Be careful using knives and scissors so that you don't experience a cut. It's always safer to use an electric razor than it would be a razor with a blade. Choose a toothbrush that's soft and don't brush too hard because again, if you are prone to bleeding gums and then are on warfarin, that's going to just kind of cause further bleeding to occur. It's always best not to use toothpicks, but instead gently floss your teeth and always wear shoes or slippers both inside and outside of the house just to better protect um, your feet from having any, uh, from getting uh, bruised or from uh, walking on something and you happen to get cut uh, or other injury. It's really important to take care when you're trimming your toenails and you might want to um, actually have someone else do that for you. So a couple of options, perhaps um, when you go in to see your provider, they would be kind enough to do that. There are home health agencies that um, have nurses that take care of people's um, toenails and help to cut them and uh, keep them, keep your feet in good shape. There are also podiatrists, doctors that are, um, just are responsible for foot care that also can help um, trim your toenails. And it, along with that goes not trimming corns or calluses by yourself, but allowing someone else to do that um, so that they can better manage any bleeding or any other problems that might occur um, if you um, have issues that come up um, 
when that's being done. It's important to stay active while you're on your warfarin, so as active as you can possibly be, but you do want to limit your risk during exercise. So just to be mindful and to take, um, to be aware of and take extra precaution uh, while you're doing exercises, um, that you don't like bump yourself and get injured or you're, you don't fall, um, some of those kinds of things. Always wear gloves when you do yard work. And again, we talked about wearing shoes or some good uh, footwear when you're outside. Um, not only if you're doing yard work, but if you're walking, um, jogging, any of those kinds of things. Can you take other medicine? A lot of us have to be on medications for other illnesses that we have. And like other medications, the warfarin that you're taking can change the way that other medicine work. And the other medicine that you're taking or that gets ordered for you can also change the way that your warfarin works. So the best advice is to really talk to your doctor about all of the other medicine that you take, including all your vitamins, all of the herbal products that you take, all the medications that you might take for pain, and any over-the-counter medications that you take so that the doctor or the nurse practitioner, whomever you're seeing, can take a look at, at all of those medications and really be able to give you good advice about um, what interactions uh, might be occurring and um, how to keep you uh, safe and prevent any either bleeding and, and or clotting from occurring. Any medicine that has aspirin in it while you're taking Coumadin can be harmful. So again, it's very, very important that if you're taking particularly pain medication that you have a conversation with your doctor about whether or not they want you to be on that product while you're taking the warfarin. And a good rule of thumb is to always, always tell your doctor about the medication that you're taking. Before you start a new medication, get some feedback from them. When you stop taking a medication, let them know that you've stopped that. And really it's a good rule of thumb to take your medicine with you when you go to see your physician or your practitioner so that they can see exactly what you're on or keep a really good list of all of the current medications that you're on, what the name of the medication is, what the dose is, how many times you're taking it, when you're taking it, and take that to all of your visits. That's really helpful to your provider, and it's also really helpful um, to you to make sure that you keep that list current so that we have one source of truth and everybody's on the same page and take that with you to all of your visits. So does warfarin affect your diet? It's important to keep your diet the same. So to be consistent is really important. There are many foods that do have vitamin K in them that might work against your warfarin, but you can safely eat them in moderation. So don't make any big changes to your diet while you're on warfarin. For example, there are green leafy vegetables that have vitamin K. And if you've been eating them in moderation, you can continue to do that without having any issues. The problem arises if you were all of a sudden decided you were going to eat like two great big salads that had kale and broccoli and some of these other things in them twice a day when you normally hadn't done that. So again, moderation is really the key to remaining safe. It's also important not to start a weight loss plan while you're taking warfarin, unless it's under the guidance of a nutritionist or your physician. And it's also important to be wary that certain drinks like Boost and Ensure Carnation Instant Breakfast, Glucerna, 
all have a certain amount of vitamin K in them. And again, before you start to drink those, it really would be important to make sure that you're talking to your provider about that and having some kind of a conversation about whether that is appropriate for you at this particular time. So here's a list of some foods that are high in vitamin K. And so you can see that a lot of the green vegetables, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, lettuce, spinach, um, all of the kind of the greens are all high in vitamin K. But again, if you've eaten those in moderation before you start on your cuminin, you can continue to do that. Also be wary that certain other um, uh, foods such as um, ginger, avocados, green tea, um, blueberries, and alcohol also can have an effect on your uh, warfarin and then in turn affect your um, bo uh, body's ability for the blood to either be too thin or not thin enough. So again, this is not a comprehensive list by any means. It's some of the more um, <clears throat> um, common foods that um, you would find that people would eat. So what do you need to talk to your doctor or doctors about? So it's important that it's not just the doctor who's ordering your Coumadin and managing that that you're um, talking to, but also all of the doctors that you go to. You want to be sure that they all know that you're taking warfarin so that the, when they decide to add a medication or stop a medication, that they're aware of that and can be considerate with respect to the warfarin and how that might impact um, that drug. So again, be honest about all the medication you're taking. Again, all the vitamins, all the supplements, all the over-the-counter, everything that you take for pain, very, very important. Let your physician know if you can't afford to pay for your warfarin and or any other medicine. There are programs out there that they're aware of that can help you do that and or they can refer you to others that will help you, can help you get those medications paid for. Anytime you have any bleeding, any stools that are red or black or tarry, any red urine or spit or sputum that's red, if you notice more bruising after you've fallen, if you're dizzy or you have a stomach ache or a headache or a cut that doesn't stop, stop bleeding, those are all very important events that you need to make sure that you communicate to your physician with. And it's really a partnership with your physician. They rely on you to share information with them and you need to come to expect that they're also taking the time to answer your questions as well. If you can't eat, if you're sick or and vomiting or you have loose stools, again that can uh, over time have an impact on your warfarin. Anytime you stop or start any medication, even if it is an over-the-counter, share that with your, your doctor or your provider. So, and finally, there are some, just in, in wrapping up, there are some important things to remember. So warfarin or Coumadin is a really important medicine that can help you stay healthy during certain circumstances or with certain diagnoses. So it's really important that you take all medicine, and especially warfarin, as the doctor ordered, and to keep all of your appointments for all your checkups, for all your lab work that you have to have done. If you don't understand something that you're told, let somebody know. Ask them to put it into words that you can understand. And if you miss a dose, 
please be sure to let your physician know so that they can direct you as to what kinds of things they want you to do. Do they want you to take that? Do you, they want you to come in for um, an appointment, what it is, whatever it is that they want you to do. But if you miss a dose, again, of any medication, be sure that you let someone know so that they can help you determine what it is that you need to do to get back on track. And finally, we want you to be safe with all medications. And again, warfarin is a very potent medication, and so just taking some time to be aware of and alert to things that will help you to be safe is very important. This concludes the presentation on warfarin or Coumadin safety. My name is Tony Kettner, and I'm the Medication Safety Project Specialist at Metastar. And in closing, I would just like to say thank you for listening to this presentation. And please be sure, as always, if you have any questions about any medications, that you talk to your doctor and let them know of your concerns or your issues. And again, please remember to take your medications with you when you go to your appointment and or a comprehensive medication list so that there is one source of truth that both you and your providers know exactly what medications you're taking. Again, thank you and stay safe.